Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it always is to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, 
and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to the second Sunday of Lent 2021. Liturgically speaking, not calendrically, if that's a word, but liturgically speaking, it has been one year since this current pandemic began. Yes, it was the second Sunday of Lent 2020 that St. Michael's and all the other houses of worship closed their doors. This year, because Easter is earlier than last year, therefore so is Lent. So it's not quite a year according to the calendar, but it sure seems like it to a lot of folks. In a way, this has been the longest Lent in history. I feel almost like saying, hey, if you're still alive, congratulations. We've all been affected one way or the other, but we're going to make it out of this whole pandemic and we'll make it out to the other side. It'll be another form of Easter, won't it? A little more secular, perhaps. In speaking to people when I uh, make some checkup calls to see how folks are doing, I often ask them, what is it that's keeping them going during this pandemic? What, what is it? What's that key that keeps you going? And more often than not, they will say, it is my faith. If I hadn't had faith in God, in Jesus, knowing that Jesus walks with me every step of the way, I don't think I would have my buoyant attitude. And I asked them what that faith means, and they said it's that feeling. They can feel Jesus in their hearts. They can feel Jesus walking with them. Well, that's pretty spectacular stuff, if you ask me. A personal relationship with God, with Jesus, is not something that people outside of the Christian faith will resonate with. They'll never experience it. We as Christians have become, over the years, quite familiar with Jesus, as we used to sing in the, what was a popular hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But our relationship with God as humans didn't start in quite that way at all with this friendship idea. As we learned in our Genesis reading for today, it makes it pretty clear that God initiated the calling of Abraham, but Abraham's part did not presume any intimacy on his part. The covenant was not so much a friendship between Abraham and God as it was almost more business sounding in, the, in its arrangement. God referred to himself not as our friend, but as El Shaddai, or the God Almighty, the God of mountains and of the sea and of every living being. Not a cuddly relationship. But God's smarter than that, of course. He knew that we needed something a bit more from God, a little bit more imminent, a little bit closer. Our relationship with God up to that time had been very transcendent. It felt like God was really far off in the heavens, but it wasn't exactly friendly. Now, I don't mean that we're 
supposed to be buddy buddy with with Jesus, but somewhere in between that transcendent, that far away, and the imminent. We are Anglicans, of course, after all, and we find that middle way between God as being very distant and God as being understood as an imminent cozy chum. As our theology has grown and developed over the centuries, or I should say our understanding of God has matured over the ages, we've come to understand that how much God absolutely adores us. He loves us passionately. He invites us to share and participate in God's life. We can grow closer to God by living sacrificially, by giving of ourselves to Him and to each other. In our Gospel, Jesus says, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Well, there are many ways to do this, but the main one, I think, is to serve other people. If we can empty ourselves of our own needs and our own wants and focus on the needs of others, that brings us so much closer to God. We practice this hope of becoming one with God with every prayer that we utter. Jesus refers to himself as the way. Literally in Greek, hodos, it means a road. You walk on a road. You travel the way of the road. And Jesus is such a path for us. We accomplish this, as the theologian Richard Rohr says, by petitioning him, then by studying him, later by imitating him, and by dialoguing with him. In the Gospel of John, there's a marvelous illustration of the beloved disciple who reclined on the breast of Jesus. He listened to the heartbeat of Jesus. Now, how intimate is that? This makes a wonderful model for us because as we get closer to God, we can listen to that heartbeat of Jesus. The more we want to lean back into Jesus' depth, we find ourselves sinking down towards the center of our own being, bringing us close to the central heartbeat of God. By sitting quietly with Jesus, we can picture ourselves leaning like that beloved disciple did, feeling the warmth of his love. You see, because of this long history, um, beginning with that Abrahamic covenant with God, we have come a long way, baby, and a long and faithful way. And God, fortunately, never gives up on us and continually draws us in closer and closer to him. Amen. In peace, I bid the prayers of this people for the cares and concerns of the church and the world, and for all peoples in their daily life and work, for those endangered by war, for our enemies and ourselves, that all people might respond to your love and open their hearts to reconciliation. And for this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for the Episcopal Farm Worker Ministry in Newton Grove, and the members of that community who struggle during this difficult time. May they find hope. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord. We pray for all who have died, especially those who have died during this pandemic, alone and afraid, and those who died in war, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers.
blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.